Uh, good morning, good evening, or good afternoon to everyone. It depends on what time you are uh, viewing this uh, video. And this is a pre-recorded video for the final term of uh, Technology for Teaching and Learning 1. In, uh, uh, in, this, in this time, in this period, we will study the theories and principles in the use and design of technology-driven lesson. And we will study Dale's Con Experience, uh, Brunner's Three Tire uh, Model of Learning, the TIPA, the Assure Models, or the Assure Model and other models of technology-enhanced instruction lessons. Uh, we begin with the eight M's of teaching. And in preparing to become a teacher, there are elements that should be taken into consideration. One way of putting it is the eight M's of teaching, and each element contributes to the uh, ensuring or to ensuring effective instruction. The eight M's or the eight words that begin with letter M uh, of teaching are as follows, the milieu, which means the learning environment, the matter or the subject matter, which is the content of learning, the method, which are the teaching and learning activities. The material refers to the resources of learning. The media is uh, how you communicate uh, uh, teaching. Motivation is arousing and sustaining interest in learning. Mastery is the internalization of learning, while measurement is the evidence that learning took place. Uh, the eight M's of teaching is uh, uh, founded on this principle. Teaching is the responsibility of the teacher, while learning is the responsibility of the learner. Uh, if you will look at this uh, paradigm or conceptual framework, uh, learning here is the, the student's responsibility. Of course, as a learner, you have your own uh, environment or your senses is a very important uh, factor, of course, for learning. And uh, there is the stimulus and uh, of course this environment or senses is on the side of the teaching is called the milieu and the stimulus is actually represented by the matter or the content of the subject the method material and media so this is the uh, these four m's uh, act as stimuli for the mind and when the mind of course uh, responds to this uh, contents or matter method material media and uh, response it is called you have been able to motivate uh, learning so it leads to change uh, in behavior and mainly due to the mastery or internalization of your lessons or of the contents and then we go to the ideal person measured or assessed by the teacher uh, in the uh, lesson plan okay or plantilla in uh, you have the so-called learning objective and then the so-called learning content which is the topic or the matter and then you provide learning experiences and resources, including motivation, method, materials, media mastery. And then after you provide learning experiences and resources, normally in teaching, you evaluate the outcomes by measuring them. Uh, with reference to the eight M's of instruction, one element is media and the other is material. These two M's are actually the elements of the cone of experience uh, as we will study. No? Edgar Dale relates well with various instructional media uh, which form part of the system's approach to instruction. According to Dale, the cone is a visual analogy 
And like all analogies, it does not bear an exact and detailed relationship to the complex elements it represents. The cone of experience by Dale is a visual model that shows a continuum of learning, a pictorial device that presents bands, okay, or uh, it's like a rubber band, it's like a step, no? Step of experience. It does not strictly define the bands to be mutually exclusive, but allows the fluid movement across the levels. In fact, sensory aids may overlap and even uh, blend into one another. For example, viewing a play is far different from being part of it. No? It is far different listening to somebody explaining the architectural design from actually executing the plan. So this is what we call the conex of experience by day. Uh, normally, there is the degree of abstraction when you talk or when you teach uh, a lesson. You start normally with the concrete and go to the abstract. And you start with uh, what? Uh, direct, purposeful here. Uh, here, motor skills and attitudes, cognitive skills before the so-called information. The version of Dale's Cone of Experience with percentage as to which band will hone higher order thinking skills <coughs> and engage learners more may be confusing, of course, because it may not necessarily mean that learning better takes place when materials or activities belong to the upper level of the cone or that the nature of involvement is more active if it is in the uh, bottom. For all the descriptive categorization of learning experiences, uh, there are other factors to be factored in, diba? Katulad ng student motivations to be engaged and also to learn. According to Dale, the pattern of arrangement of the band's experience is not difficult. Uh, it's not difficulty but degree of abstraction. The amount of immediate sensory participation that is involved. Uh, here, uh, it is an example, no? A still paragraph of a tree is not more difficult to understand than a dramatization of Hamlet. Of course, no? It is simply an, in itself a less concrete teaching material than dramatization. In our teaching, we do not always begin with the direct experience at the base of the cone. Rather, we begin with the kind of experience that is most appropriate to the needs and abilities of particular learning situation. Then, of course, we vary this experience with many other types of learning activities. So again, this is the cone of experience by Edgar Dale. Uh, if you look at the uh, at the cone, uh, normally uh, learning takes place beginning in the direct or purposeful experience, going to this uh, abstract or text or verbal symbols. When we say direct purposeful experience, we refer to the foundation of experiencing learning using the senses meaningful knowledge and understanding are established this experiential experiential learning uh, is where when one learns by doing and then there are also contrived experiences which are actually representations no like models miniatures or mock-ups there are things or events that may be beyond the learner's grasp and so contrived experiences can provide a substitute. Dramatized experiences are commonly used as activities that allow students to actively participate in a reconstructed experience through role-playing or dramatization. 
And then we have the so-called demonstration when one decides to show how things are done. It is an actual execution of a procedure or a process. Uh, example in baking on how to execute the dance, uh, I think is, uh, is more of a demonstration. Study trips are actual visits to certain locations to observe a situation or case which may not be available inside the classroom. And then we have exhibits. These are displays of models such as pictures, artifacts, posters uh, that provide the message or the needed information. So these are basically viewed. However, uh, what's that? There are currently exhibits that allow the viewers to yes. Uh, yeah, uh, in the first uh, idea, some exhibits are still, no? But now there are uh, exhibits that uh, participants or viewers can uh, do something or manipulate the displays. Then uh, television and motion pictures. These uh, provide a two-dimensional reconstruction of reality. So they provide a feeling of realism as viewers try to understand the message portrayed by actors in the films. And then we have photos, recordings, and also radio. We also have visual symbols. Uh, we are going to abstraction. Huh? These are more abstract representations of the concept or the uh, information, like a graph, a chart, or a flow chart. Then uh, the last uh, cone of experience, most abstract are so-called verbal symbols. This is the most abstract because they may not exactly look like the concept or object they represent, but are just symbols, words, called codes, or formula. So looking at this uh, learning pyramid, how does a student learn? Uh, five percent, they learn five percent when you do lecture. They learn ten percent of the subject matter when you read. They learn twenty percent of the content or the lesson when you are uh, doing audiovisual like televisions. Thirty percent when you are demonstrating a certain I don't know, idea. 50% is a good uh, learning no, tool uh, for discussion and then 75% practice by doing and 90% if the subject matter is taught by those being taught, it's 90%. So look at this, uh, the learning pyramid and also the daily cones of experience. People generally remember 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they hear and see, 70% of what they say and write, and 90% of what they do. So, because in these uh, stages, uh, stages, this is the, the real thing or the concrete, no? And then going to more abstract like reading. And uh, the possible learning outcomes for, uh, for uh, the more concrete is analyze, design, create, evaluate uh, uh, something. And then the next stage would be to demonstrate, apply, practice. And then in uh, the more abstract, it's more of define, list, describe, exp and explain. So uh, we finish with, uh, with Dale's cones of experience. And it is good to note that technology, the use or the use of media and technology influences learning so if you do not use technology 
uh, you only read something and people just listen so they will just learn 10% uh, of what they read no? or of what you read to them 20% of what they hear of course from you no so yeah yeah okay uh 10 percent of what they read and 20 percent of what they hear from others so <clears throat> i hope that from this uh cone of experience you will see uh the importance of uh, materials media and technology the second uh uh, Churi is by Brunner. Uh, it's called Three Tired Model of Learning. Uh, cognitive psychologist uh, Jerome Brunner felt the goal of education should be intellectual development represented by his theory of development or the Three Tired Model of Learning. And he has the following beliefs about learning and education. First, curriculum should foster the development of problem-solving skills through the process of uh, inquiry and discovery. Second, subject matter should be represented in terms of the child's way of viewing the world. Third, curriculum should be designed so that the mastery of skills lead to the mastery of still more powerful ones. Uh, fourth, advocated, he advocated teaching by organizing concepts and learning by discovery. And then uh, last, culture should shape notions through which people organize their views of themselves and others and the world in which they live and this is uh, the three tired model of learning by Brunner and it points out that every area of knowledge can be presented and learned in three distinct steps first of all an active through a series of actions iconic through a series of illustrations or icons and symbolic through a series of symbols <coughs> Sorry. With young learners, it is highly recommended that a learner proceed from uh, an active to iconic and lastly to the symbolic. A young learner would not be rushed to move to immediate abstraction at the highest level without the benefit of a gradual unfolding. However, when the learner is mature and capable of, uh, to direct his own learning, it may more fluidly across the cone of experience so if you are teaching uh, already it's good to to always begin with an active going to iconic going to symbolic especially for young learners so what is the inactive a series of actions no uh, people learn when they see a series of actions, iconic, when they see a series of illustrations and through series of symbols. There is an increasing uh, amount or level of abstraction as you go from an active, iconic to symbolic. Uh, we can also, uh, what's that, compare, no? Dale and Brunner's cone of experience. So Brunner has the so-called inactive, iconic, symbolic, and Dale has the real thing, the actual uh, action, the actual event, pictures, films, and then language and mathematics. So we go here because uh, this is by Dale and this is by Brunner. Brunner is learning by doing, learning through observation, and learning through abstractions. And uh, normally, we can compare, really compare, and join Brunner and Dale's methodology of uh, learning. No? So, uh, we have studied the two. Uh, principle or theory in the use of design 
uh, in the use and design of technology driven lesson thank you for listening and then we will uh, discuss this discuss this after the midterm uh, examination week god bless you all